Hi, I'm Brett Peterson, the Business Rogue, and today we're going to talk about how to interview people about your product. As always, if you're new here, welcome. Please hit the like button and subscribe button if you haven't already. It helps us rise up in the algorithm and share this information with more people. By the end of today's video, you should know how to ask questions of your potential customers, how to interview people about your product, how to figure out if your assumptions, the things you believe about your product are right, and how to move forward, take the next steps. Let's get started. When you first start talking with customers, don't talk about your solution. The first thing you need to validate, the first thing you need to be sure is real, is the problem you're trying to solve. If the problem isn't real, your answer to that problem doesn't matter. So the first thing you need to talk to customers about is the problem. If you think that there is a need for people to have purple socks, go talk to customers who wear socks. Pick a small segment that you want to focus on. And the problem you think that that group has is that there are no purple socks on the market. First, go talk to them and say, how much do you care about your socks? If you find that many of them care about their socks or, or wish they had better socks, that's something you can go after. If instead you ask 100 of your customers, hey, how often do you think about socks? I'm like, I don't care, whatever. Not a good sign. So you need to gauge that. You also should check and see if there are purple socks on the market. There probably are. And then ask, what are they using to solve that problem now? If it's a real problem, how do they get around it? What problems are there with the current alternatives? What problems do they have? Why are the current things they're doing not good enough? Then you can ask people about your solution. Let me give you a hint though. Unless you're Superman, you're not gonna get it right the first time. That's okay. That doesn't make you a bad entrepreneur. Good entrepreneurs double check. If you are getting it right on the first try, give yourself a little bit of a reality check. When People think they've got it right on the first try. Often they're ignoring what their people have said. So double and triple check what you're hearing from people. When you're doing interviews, write it down, right? And go back to your notes and say, hmm, I thought they said that they loved my product, but what they actually said was they didn't despise my product. It's a very different thing. But what, how do you actually do that? What's the, what's the nitty gritty how to? Well, a couple of things. First and foremost, go talk to people. How do you find people to interview? During non-lockdown periods, I would say hit the pavement, right? Go somewhere where your customers congregate, conventions, stores. Can't really do that so much now under lockdown, so you have to be a little more creative. Reach out on Facebook. Reach out to friends that you know. But friends are going to want it to be nice to you. So ask for friends of friends. Like, hey, Jim, I know you're in that, like, sock enthusiast community. Can you refer me to some friends of yours in the community who will give me honest feedback? If he's a friend of yours, we'll probably say, yeah, that's fine, right? He'll introduce you to five people. So get the first conversation, do a little interview, take notes, ask for referrals. Who else do you know that I could talk to you about this product? Here's a hint. If nobody's willing to talk to you about the problem, the problem is probably not worth solving. Other methods, use Google ads. You should put an advertisement up there that goes to a landing page where people submit their email address. See how many clicks you get. Google ads tracks all that. If 10,000 people are clicking and they see your landing page and two sign up, your solution has a problem. Even better, on that email page sign up, ask if you can reach out to them to get more feedback, and boom, now you've got some interview people. Another route you can go on this that does not replace the previous stuff. Don't do that. I'm looking at you. You can also observe your customers. Go watch at a big box store, You know, browse the socks, socks aisle for a while and see what people buy or don't buy. See what they pick up. Where this is interesting especially is when you think that people are acting in a way that's different from what they say. So if people say, I really want flamboyant socks, but when they're presented with flamboyant socks, they don't buy them, they buy black socks instead, now you have an interesting piece of information. So in your interviews, you can ask, hey, you know, when I'm buying socks, I see that most people buy black socks instead of colored ones. Why is that? And people will say, oh, well, I can't wear the cool socks to work, or oh, I can't wear cool socks to church, or oh, my wife, you know, hides my red socks because they turn everything pink in the laundry. So you can use observation as part of it. It does not replace talking to your customers. Another thing you can do, and this is even further removed, so again, don't use this in a, to excuse skipping out on customer interviews. You can use market data. What is the market for socks in the United States? What socks are doing best? Let me look at sock, you know, sock companies. Which ones are doing best in the stock market? Which ones are posting the best sales numbers? Are there public publicly traded sock companies that I can look at their sales reports, their investor reports, and see, you know, this year we sold 200 million pairs of socks, next year we expect to sell 205 million pairs of socks, whatever. You need to do some other research in the market, at minimum, 
to see what other things are out there. How many other purple sock companies exist? Your customers are gonna reference things that you should have found out as you look through the competitive landscape, right? And you can ask your customers, hey, have you ever tried competitor A, competitor B, competitor C? The interviews don't have to be formal. You start having conversations with customers like, hey, I've heard this and this and this from people I've interviewed. I'm thinking about starting a socks company because I've heard this and this and this. Here are the socks I'm coming up with. What do you think? We're trying to solve these problems. What do you think? And then let your customers tell you what they think. They'll Sometimes they'll be brutal. That's good. You want that. If no one's telling you hard truths, they're buttering you up. Then, with all that information, you can start making decisions. Nine out of ten of our customers want burgundy. Ninety percent of them want burgundy instead of royal purple. Maybe we pivot to burgundy for the first round of products. My challenge to you this week, go talk to your customers. Try to get ten interviews this week. Not friends, not family. People you don't know. Figure out if the problem you're trying to solve is real. Figure out what they're doing currently. Figure out what the problems are with what they're doing currently. Right? And then, and only then, you can start to ask about your ideas for a solution, about your product. Good luck starting your business. I hope you find many new insights that really help you move forward. Hopefully this will be an exciting, energizing process for you. Trust me that it's worth it. You will learn things you can't learn any other way and it will make your product and your business better. As always, uh, thanks for watching. If you haven't already hit the like and the subscribe button, please do so. Please also hit the notification bell so you can see these videos right when they come out. It really helps us with the algorithm so more people can see what we're trying to put out there to help other small business owners like you and other entrepreneurs get started. Good luck starting your business. We'll see you next time. Well, I hear you, fellow sock sufferer, but here's my purple socks, TN. Well, I don't like green, blue, red, and yellow socks, or black socks, or gray socks, or white socks.